It is a joy to be here. This is actually my first preach, I think, of 2024 happening here with you at Covenant. And I have been 21 days prayer and fasting. I'm sure many of you have too. And I am ready to get this Word out of me. And uh, I consider it always a privilege to come somewhere where I don't anymore feel like a visitor, but I feel like an extension of the family. I mean, I even feel like you almost had like that English accent just for me. I don't know what that was, whether that was a fake English accent or a real one, I wasn't quite sure, but I can do your future voiceovers, it's okay. But I do feel that God has knit my heart together, first and foremost, with your pastor, Amy. And I love Amy and Stacy. They are incredible people. And I love the legacy of this house. And so this morning, I wanna speak into the house. And so I'm having you stand so that you're ready to receive the worship, got the atmosphere and the presence of God so tangible. But now we have to be so hungry that we don't just sit and, and maybe take a snack today. I want you to get everything that God has for you today. And I wanna to speak to us corporately as the church. I believe this can be the greatest year that Covenant has ever seen, but we're gonna to have to make some decisions about how we approach this year right now, make some decisions about what we're gonna do with the time ahead of us in these next few months. So let's just right now surrender. And God, we ask You right now in this atmosphere. God, we thank You that You are a speaking God. And God, as we are just the second month into this new year, God, we come knowing that there is fresh manna, that there is a fresh Word, that there is fresh grace and there is fresh hope. And God, today I pray that we would lean in with a hunger and lean in with a thirst. And God, I pray that You will get me out of the way so that God, You can deliver what needs to be delivered into this house today. And God, I thank You that You go before us. And God, You've already prepared a way for this Word. So God, let it find listening ears and an open heart and ready hands in Jesus' Name. Amen and amen. You may take your seats. Well, I arrived in Dallas ready to go, but my bags did not follow me. <clears throat> I don't know what was going on, whether the enemy was trying to throw me for a loop, but he should have known better because this girl can shop in the drop of a hat. So he had no way. I, I did for one moment think about the Old Testament and think about how they wore priestly robes. And I looked at the Marriott dressing gown robe and thought it ain't gonna cut it for church this morning. And so thank the Lord for Tajay and stores near the hotel. The Lord provides in mysterious ways but we are here and I am ready to speak to you because you've been in a series. I know the last few weeks that you have been looking at God's blueprint. You've been listening to different messages that have helped you understand that God has a plan and you have a part to play. And I just kind of wanted to add into that emphasis that your senior leaders chose to begin this year with, chose to focus you in. I want to add an emphasis that I believe is super important for you as a body this year, you as Covenant Church this year. I don't just say things lightly. And at the beginning when I said, I think this could be your best year, I believe that with all of my heart because of what I want to share with you today. I want to talk to you about God's blueprint, God's plan for the church, for the church on the planet, for us as God's people. You might have just rocked up today thinking that this is just about you and your life, but you need to understand that God has called us to be the bride of Christ, a body that represents Him, an army that goes out and takes territory, that you are not here today as just an individual. You are here today as part of something way bigger. And maybe you need a fresh revelation of what God is calling you into because God has a plan and His original blueprint for all the church is found in the book of Acts. The book of Acts, wow, what a book. I think you all as homework today, 
set by Teacher Gamble should go and reread the book of Acts because I tell you, when I read the book of Acts, I have to look at the church and go, guys, what is wrong with us? We need to wake up. We need to get out of our seats. We need to get off our blessed assurance. It's not the book of good intentions. It's not the book of good suggestions. It's a book of actions. And in 2024, I believe the church is called to get back to a book of actions, back to a church that do more than they say, that walk out more than they profess to live, that actually are the living example of what this book is all about. If you were to do a brief overview of the 28 chapters in the book of Acts, it covers from the ascension in the upper room to the birthing and the sending out of the church. It's filled with encounters and conversions. It's filled with persecution and it's filled with great moments of miraculous actions. We see the apostle Peter become the rock that which Christ said he would build his church on. We see the apostle Paul go from a persecutor of Christians to a road of Damascus experience to becoming one of the most prolific writers of the New Testament and you think you can't be used by God? Hello. The book of Acts is filled with the gospel being spread and the church being birthed. But, and it goes from Jerusalem to Samaria to Asia to Greece and to the ends of Rome. The church is like the church in Antioch and Philippi and Thessalonica were birthed. And we read all about it in the book of Acts. And during the time that the book of Acts is written, there are also the books of Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Romans, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Corinthians that are all also written over this time span. In fact, Paul wrote Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians from prison. They're known as the prison epistles. What did you do lately? Hello. I'm already stirred up after just telling you what goes on in this book, and I haven't even begun my message today. If this doesn't get you thinking, what is my excuse? I don't know what will. I am reading to you not some fiction. I'm reading to you facts that this book is telling the story of your ancestors, those that went before you in the faith and on their page in history. We can read miracle after miracle, breakthrough after breakthrough, and we are now those that are writing our page in history. We are now the future of the church being written. And I want to ask you today, do we live a life that looks like this book of Acts or is there more for us to do? In the book of Acts, if it was a movie, I think it would be mission possible. Not mission impossible, mission possible. When I read the book of Acts, I hear in my head, Okay, that's for Mission Impossible, for all you good Christians that don't watch those kind of movies. I'm sorry, but I do. But it's the mission that's given, and the mission is in Acts 1 verse 8, where it tells us that we're going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the book of Acts, is mission possible. Why? Because God had a blueprint. God had a plan. And his plan was, I know you thought it was awesome when Jesus was walking around in the flesh. But I'm going to do something even greater. Because when Jesus was walking around in the flesh, he could only be with a person at a time. And, and God's like, I have a blueprint for the church. I'm going to make sure they can have Jesus with them all of the time, each and every one of them, no matter where they go or no matter where they are. I'm going to send something. I'm going to send someone so that this mission is possible. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and he's going to come on them in power. And because of that power, this mission will be possible. Don't read the book of Acts and say to yourself, well, they were just extra super duper Christians. I mean, they just had something that we do not have. No, Acts 
4, verse 13, after people witnessed the apostles, Peter and John, this was said of them. They were just unschooled, ordinary men. But what had they noted? That they had been with Jesus. If you are an unschooled, ordinary man or woman, but you choose to live your life with Jesus, you will have the same power flowing through you as they had flowing through them. And I have come to shake you up today to ask you, Covenant Church, what will 2024, 2024 look like? Will it look like the book of Acts or will it look like the book of indecision? Will it look like a book written of miracles, signs, and wonders, and testimony? Or it will look like doubts, and questions, and in and out commitment. You have to decide what part you will play in the mission that God has called your life to, and called my life to. And so God has this blueprint that his church would be powerful, that his people would be out there as great witnesses to the ends of the earth, that we would be assigned and we would be sent. But we have a part to play. And I want to give you three things that these men, these apostles had to decide. This was their part. This was their part in the decision that they were going to work with this plan of God. Number one, they had to decide to be spirit-filled. Number two, spirit-led. And number three, spirit strong. I want to take you through each of these to help you today realize that this year you also can have a life that is spirit-filled, spirit-led, and spirit-strong. I have good news for you today. If you have decided to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, then when you make that decision, somebody moved in. His name is the Holy Spirit. He moved into your life as the great helper, as the great advocate, as the one that would be the empowering of your life spiritually. You don't have to wonder, do I have it? It was guaranteed and given to you. The Holy Spirit resides in you. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, He's on the inside of you. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're full of it. You are. Whether you act like it or not, I don't know, but you are full of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, we read how in Acts 2, they were gathered in that place on Pentecost. He says, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I mean, Hollywood's got nothing on the Bible. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. You might say, well, I don't have a tongue of fire on my shiny head. No, but you have the fire on the inside of you. And sometimes we forget that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to remind you today that he said he would pour out his Spirit on all people, that he was going to use our lives to be a witness to the end of the earth. So the question is, are you living Spirit-filled? Are you living Spirit-filled? The church is not a spiritual gas station. Some of you, I feel like you come. Maybe this was you this morning. You're like, oh, I just got to get to church. I'm running on empty. I just got to get in the worship. Somebody stick the fuel pipe in me. Someone give me some fully leathered Holy Spirit injection. And I'll just be able to get through another week. And then I'll be back on Sunday for a refill. No, you don't need to be filled with the Spirit. You already are filled with the Spirit. He's already in you. You don't need more of the Spirit. You just need to give more of the Spirit, more of you. See, let me show you how it works. When you said yes to Jesus, He put the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And right now, if you see that sand in the bottom of this dial, it's just sat there. 
It's like sediment. It's not doing anything. And some of you, this describes the Holy Spirit in your life. It's like spiritual sediment. It has a potential. It has a power, but you're not letting it fill you because you live your life the wrong side up. And you have to decide to flip your life the right way up so the Holy Spirit can start to fill you from your head down to your toes, from the way you think to the way you hear to what you watch to the way you speak to what you use your hands for, for what you give your heart to, to where you take your feet. The Holy Spirit needs to fill you, but many of you are like, I have no Holy Spirit. No, you've just filled your thing, your life with other things. You're full of greed, so there's no room for the Holy Spirit. You're full of anger, so there's no room for the Holy Spirit. You're full of your own agenda, and so there's no room for the Holy Spirit, but it's not that he's not in you, but you have to do a flip about the way you live your life and say, God, you come first. Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, fill my mind with the right thoughts. Holy Spirit, help me be full of the way that you feel about the people that I encounter. And all through the book of Acts, it has this phrase over and over again. It talks about in Acts 4 verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak out to those that were gathered. It says in Acts 4 verse 31, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and so they preached the word of God with boldness. I'm telling you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't just sit on your seat on Sunday and give a golf clap. Because the Holy Spirit in you is like, she's speaking about me. And I'm awesome. And I can do amazing things. And I look at the church around the globe, I'm like, what happened? Like imagine for a moment if we all came full of the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't need a worship team to warm you up like it's an aerobic session. You won't need someone to convince you to give because when you're full of the Holy Spirit, he's a giver. He wants to contribute. He wants to get involved. You won't need someone to tell you you should go into a small group. You're like, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I want to be around people. I want to lay hands on people. I want to speak life over people. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? And if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, then the question is, what are you full of? Full of yourself, full of your disappointments, because you're full of something. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. I only need to be around you probably for 15 minutes. I'll tell you what you're full of. Because you can say all the right things, and you can give lip service in church. But what you're full of is what comes out of you. What you're full of is what tips over in you. Are you full of generosity? Are you full of love? Are you full of life? Are you full of truth? You've got to decide to be spirit-filled. All throughout the book of Acts, they were spirit-filled. And if you're spirit-filled, then you can do the second thing. You can be spirit-led because what dominates directs. Whatever is dominating your life, I guarantee you it is directing your life. You're like, oh, I don't know why I did that. No, I know why you did that. What's dominating your life is directing your life. Why you did that is what's dominating you is offense. And so why you did that is offense is leading and directing your decisions right now. And all throughout the book of Acts, you read this incredible set of encounters where their life was spirit-led. What would it look like, Covenant Church, if this year, the greatest gift you gave to this body was you were like, you know what? I just want to be spirit-led. 
Whatever the Spirit of God is speaking to our senior pastors, whatever the Spirit of God is asking us to do in this region, whatever the Spirit of God is leading us into a church, I'm not here to question it, and I'm not here to give my opinion, and I'm not here to force my agenda, and I'm not here because I want a certain thing to happen for me. I just want to be Spirit-led. How much more would we get done if we weren't flesh-led but Spirit-led? All throughout the book of Acts, Acts 10, verse 19, it says Peter was puzzling over a vision that God had given him. And the Holy Spirit said to him, there's three men, they've come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. And what does he do? He gets up because the Spirit is leading him. He goes downstairs and he goes with them. What do we do? Spirit's like, I need you to get up. I need you to go and do that thing that I told you to do. I need you to go speak to that person. And what do we do? I'm just going to pray about it a little longer. I'm just going to seek God because that's a financial commitment. And, you know, in my budget this year, I didn't actually account for that. So I'm just going to sit on it a little longer. Lord, if you don't mind, I would like three, three things to happen that would be like witnesses to this being you. Lord's like... You are hard work. I can't get nothing done through my church because instead of being spirit-led, we're flesh-led. We're feeling-led. We're what's-in-it-for-me-led. Peter, get up without hesitation. Go downstairs and do what I've told you to do. It says in Acts 16 that Paul and Silas were traveling. It says, and the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Holy Spirit's like, "Uh uh-uh. Do you know how much trouble some of you wouldn't be in if you were spirit-led? Because when you're about to open your big mouth, the Spirit be like, "Uh uh-uh. We don't need to say that right now. Uh Uh-uh. We don't need to get involved in that right now. If you let the Spirit lead you this year, How many more things could you walk into that God has already planned for you instead of letting your flesh talk you out of it and take you somewhere you shouldn't even be? What would it look like to be spirit-filled and spirit-led? You know, last year, my husband and I took our first trip to Israel. But we landed on the day that the first bomb went off. We landed in the middle of a war zone and we were trapped in a very scary and precarious set of circumstances for the next eight days. Let me tell you something. I learned a whole new way of being spirit-led. There was one moment when we were in a compound surrounded by five men with guns, just me and my husband and our friends. And we have no idea how we were going to get out of the situation. And I'm telling you, the Spirit was leading us what to say and what to not say. What to do and what to not do. We had nothing to go on in our own strength, but we were Spirit-filled. And Spirit-filled people become Spirit-led people. And I'm telling you, I saw the goodness of God just because we were willing to not let fear fill us. Not let our flesh fill us, but stand in the middle of danger and say, Spirit of God, fill us and Spirit of God, lead us. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, there's a moment. Where, where we find that Peter is in prison and he's bound up and he's, and he's in Acts 12, he's in this place where he's got no way of escape. And he says the angel comes in the middle of the night and wakes him up. But Peter has no idea that this is an angel that's waking up. He thinks he's dreaming. And the angel begins to lead him. And he leads him past the warden and the chains fall off and past another warden. And then a gate flies open in front of him. And and it says eventually when he's on the street, he comes to his senses and out of his trance and he realizes, oh my gosh, the Spirit just led me through all of those circumstances. You know, that's how I felt like in Israel. I'm like, I have no idea how that gun didn't go off, and I have no idea how we got out of this compound, and I have no idea. There was one moment we had to choose, do we go left 
or did we go right? And everyone said, go right. And in my spirit, I was like, go left. Five minutes later, the road on the right was bombed. There's just those moments in your life where you realize this decision, the enemy would love for it to go a different way. And if in that moment your flesh is leading, you're going to end up in a place you should not be, in a business deal you shouldn't be in, in a temptation you shouldn't be in, in a compromise you shouldn't be in, in a place where your anger gets the better of you. This is not a time for the church to be flesh-led. It is a time for us to be spirit-led in every single area of our lives. What would it look like in your workplace? If you were spirit-led this week, I, I guarantee you, I absolutely guarantee you, there is someone in the place where you work that God has a plan that you meet, that God has a plan that you share the gospel with, that God has a plan that you're going to be the messenger that he's going to use to bring the hope that that person is desperately searching for, but you're going to miss it if you're not spirit-led. It's amazing when you're spirit-led how bold you are. Some of you been in the same office for years, and, you, and, you, and you're walking around the water cooler like it's Jericho. Oh, just tell me when to shout. He's like, yeah, you've been around 77 times, not seven. Like, 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 yeah, but your nerves get the better of you. And what will people think gets the better of you? But the Spirit of God on the inside of you wants to get out of you. And so you've got to go into work this week, Spirit-filled. Walk into that office and you're so Spirit-filled, you walk right past the cooler, you don't even give it a lap. And you're like, I know today I have a Holy Ghost assignment. I know there's someone in here that desperately needs the peace that I have. And I'm going to make sure that the Spirit leads me in my conversation. You're going to cut past all the waffle. You're just going to get straight to it. You've been on my heart. And I just want to say, I'm praying for you. You'll be amazed where the Spirit will lead you. But what dominates, directs, and some of you keep ending up in the same dead end. Some of you keep ending up in the same dysfunction with your children and in your marriage. Some of you keep ending up in the same tension and the same conflict. Why? Because your flesh is leading. Well, I'll apologize when they apologize. That is not Spirit-led. Well, I'll do better when they do better. That is not Spirit-led. Let's just call it what it is. Coming in church this year. God has a plan to use this house. To reach people in a way that you've never reached people before. To see multiplication in ways you've never seen multiplication before. To have miracles, signs, and wonders in a way that you've never seen miracles, signs, and wonders before. But what is our part? It's being spirit-filled. What is our part? Being spirit-led. And if you will allow God to lead you, I'm telling you, your life will shift. I feel like some of you, your life, it's like it's, it's in push mode. Like everything about your life is push. I'm just pushing my career. I'm just trying to push through into that moment of opportunity. I'm trying to push, you know, this situation with my kids. I'm trying to push in this area of my, you know, of my area of like my marriage. It's like, it's exhausting. You pushed all the way through 2023 and you still don't feel that you have any reprieve or progress from your pushing. And I resigned a long time ago from a life of push. Because I realize you can have something better. You can have a life of pull. Where the Holy Spirit pulls out of you all the things he knows is deposited in you. Where the Holy Spirit pulls out of you all the gift and talent that he entrusted to you. Where the Holy Spirit pulls out of you words and things that God has directed your path to be involved in. You don't need to have another year of push. You can have a year of being pulled and led by the Holy Spirit. You're going to have encounters like Philip had with the Ethiopian eunuch. You're going to have encounters like Paul had with the those that he led and brought to the gospel of Jesus. You're going to have encounters in places where you didn't think God could show up, but the Spirit will lead you, and as he leads you, he's going to die, wrecked you. This year, it is a year for this house.
to be filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit. And thirdly, it is a year to be Spirit strong, Spirit full, Spirit led, and Spirit strong. There's such strength in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is not a read for the faint-hearted. If you want Christianity that feels like a vacation, forget it. Don't read the book of Acts. This is not a vacation we're on, okay? This is a mission we're on. If your life doesn't feel like a mission field, you're on the wrong field. We have an assignment to do. There is no body that's redundant in the kingdom of God. We're all fully employed on this mission. And you read in the Bible, you read in the book of Acts, how Stephen is stoned to the point of death. And yet his spirit is strong. How is that possible? He says in Acts 7 verse 55, says Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And they put their hands over their ears and they began shouting and they rushed at him and they dragged him out of the city and they began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats, check this line out, and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul, later to be Paul. The person you think is the biggest enemy could become the biggest person used by God this year if you are spirit-led. And as they stoned Stephen, Stephen literally cried out, Lord, receive my spirit. He didn't cry out his complaint. He didn't cry out, this isn't fair. He didn't cry out, what in the world is this that I signed up for? There was something about Stephen that was so spirit strong. He saw something that no one else had seen. And this year, if you could get a glimpse, not of your circumstances, but God in heaven, Jesus at the right hand of the Father, of all of the people that have gone before you in that cloud of witnesses, if you could get a glimpse of something greater than yourself, I'm telling you, your spirit would stand up and your spirit would be gaining strength and you'd realize, if they can do it, so can I. If God be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> what about Paul? In Acts 14, he's been beaten up. He's been stoned by the crowd, and it says they stoned Paul, and they dragged him out of town, thinking he was dead. In other words, they beat him up so much, they didn't think he was alive anymore. His body was so broken by the stoning that they'd given him, they didn't think there was any breath in his lungs anymore. And so they drag his body, thinking he's dead, and they leave it outside of the town, and the believers gather around him. Listen to this. This is Paul, the one they think is dead. He got up, but he didn't just get up. He went right back into the town that just stoned him to carry on the mission that was before him. If that ain't spirit strong, I don't know what is. We quit when someone puts something on social media that hurts our feelings. Like, we're like, I can't do it anymore. I can't do church anymore because someone in the church, they didn't greet me on Sunday and they should greet me on Sunday. I can't deal with it because something was preached that really offended my spirit. I can't handle it because so-and-so didn't save me a seat. Like, what happened? Here's Paul, like they think he's dead. This is your, this is your heritage. This is your family in the faith. Here's Paul, literally, he's like dead. He's like, he's like blood pouring out of his face. He's like bruised. His bones are all broken up. And he's getting himself up. And he's like, it's okay, guys. I got this. I might have been down, but I'm not out. I still have something to do. I still have an assignment. I still have a calling. I'm not finished yet. What happened to you? What knocked you down? What bad report took you out? What person said something that just cut you a little deep? 
2024 is the year to get back up on your feet and back to your assignment. They were spirit strong. What about Paul and Silas? They're in prison. Hello. Chained up because of their love for God. In a dark cell, not one of these prison cells with electricity and a bathroom and some clean clothes. I mean, they're in a prison cell with no light and no way of escape, no hope that anyone could see in the natural. But when your spirit's strong, even though your hands are bound and your feet are shackled, you start singing. You start singing, worthy are you, Lord. You start singing, holy are you, God. You start singing about the faithfulness of the God that was and the God that is and the God that is to come. You start singing hallelujah in a place that feels like hell. Why? Because you can chain me up, but you can't keep me down because my spirit is strong. Some of you lost your song. It's time to get it back. Some of you lost your passion. It's time to get it back. Some of you have become that shackled person in every sense that we used to be, that guy that was just full of life and full of energy. And now because you lost a job and you went through that knock and you feel like your career is not where it should be or you feel like your marriage fell apart, you yourself became a less of a person. And I'm here to let you know, on the inside of you right now. All the power you will ever need is on the inside of you right now. God could do no more than send you the Holy Spirit. Place Him on the inside of you. The same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in me and lives in you. But oh, how the enemy wants you to not believe it. Oh, how the enemy wants you to be filled with your flesh. Oh, how he wants you to feel that you can't possibly break that chain or get out of that pit, but it is a lie. And you need to know that the truth is louder than the lie. And today you are just a decision away from getting back up from saying, I'm going to live with the Spirit filling me. And I'm going to live with the Spirit leading me. And I'm going to find that strength. The Zacharias in Zephaniah says, it's not by might. Zechariah 4 verse 6, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. Acts is God's blueprint for the church. God has a plan. And God gave you the power. And so the question is, do you accept the mission? All across the house today, when it's time to ask it. If this isn't good news, I don't know what is. Some of you feel like you've been ripped off and some of you feel like you've been disappointed and some of you feel like, man, here we go again, a repeat of last year already, only in February 2024, you're already writing off the year because of the bad news or because of the check that didn't get paid. You're already saying to yourself, it's not going to be any better and I'm here to let you know you have a decision to make. All across the house, just close your eyes. Covenant Church. You have a mission. You have a mission individually and you have a mission corporately to take this good news to the ends of the earth, to reach all those that God has put in your pathway to be those that are His hands and His feet. But it's going to take a church that is Spirit-filled and it's going to take a church that is Spirit-led. And if today you're saying, God, I, I know I've got to awaken again. I've got to turn my life right side up. 
God, I've got to empty myself of the wrong stuff so I can fill myself afresh with you, God. Holy Spirit, you're here right now. You reside in every single person. And if you're saying, God, that's me today, just lift your hands right where you are. Your hands are just saying, God, I, I, I don't want to live this year defeated. I want to live spirit-filled. I, I want to be someone spirit-led. God, I need to get back up. God, I need to realize that these chains, they're no problem for you. You can break them off in a moment. God, we lift our hands right now. God, we commit this year to being different. Not because you have to do any more, God, but we have to decide today, just like those men and women in the book of Acts, to live a life that works with your plan, to live a life where we let you fill us, God, every day. Fill our minds, fill our mouths, fill our eyes, fill our ears, fill our hands, fill our hearts, fill our feet, God. I pray that this church would be known as a spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-strong house. I pray this church, wherever it needs to, would shake up and wake up the Holy Spirit deposit inside of it. From the oldest to the youngest, I pray for miracles in the hallways and miracles in the crush. I pray for miracles in the parking lot. I pray, God, as the church moves out in power, God, there would be all kinds of testifying around this community that in that house there is a spirit-filled, spirit-led community. Anoint the leadership of this house, God. Let them be spirit-led in a whole new way. Spirit-strong in a whole new way. lower your hands and just one final thing I'm going to ask. Some of you today need to get your life right with God. You're finding it hard to live that life that is an overcoming life because you are not plugged in to the one who helps you be an overcomer. You are either not calling him Lord and Savior or you have drifted far from him. And today, I am here to let you know at the beginning of this month, make a decision to put God first, to make Him your Lord, to make Him your Savior. There is no sin He won't forgive. There is no past He can't overcome. There is no dark place He won't enter. Right now, in this moment, if you reach out, He will reach out for you. So if you today say, I need God, I need a Savior, I need forgiving, I need to come back to Him, just stick your hand right up in the air. Come on like you just don't care. Be bold this moment with this decision. Say, that's me today. I, I'm not going to live one foot in, one foot out anymore. I'm making a decision. I'm all in for Jesus this year. This is going to be a different year because of this decision. So many hands. Every one of you with that hand raised, just put your hand on your heart. And if you didn't raise it and you know this is you, put your hand on your heart. I'm just going to pray over you right now and just amen this in your own heart. God, today, I thank you that you are my Savior, that you are my Lord, that you are the Savior of my soul. And today, I begin a new journey with you. As the King of kings and the Lord of lords, today, I receive you, God, and I receive the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of me. Death, where is your sting? I now have a Savior as my King. God, I thank you for salvation today. I thank you for new beginnings today. I thank you for legacy being established today. I pray today for every decision that it will be spirit-filled and spirit-strong in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, church. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Let's... Let's praise the God who is worthy today. We're going into 2024 differently. God is so good. Hey, can we just thank Pastor Charlotte for this message? I am sure that we're leaving this place stronger than when we came in this place. And we've dropped some things off today, and we're walking out without those things. And we're walking out with the Spirit, the power of the Spirit upon us. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you prayed it before and you said, you know, I'm just getting my life right and back 
uh, to the Lord. We want to make sure that we help you walk through this journey together because we're a family, right? And that's one of the things that families do. We walk through things together, right? And so we want to make sure we do that. Uh, if you could text SAVED to 54636, if you made that decision today to let Jesus be the Lord of your life and to say, I'm going to walk this life of the Spirit then text SAVE to 54636, and we'll make sure you get a seven-day devotional. We'll have our prayer team here at the altar if you need prayer for anything. And I also want to encourage you, Pastor Charlotte has uh, uh, material out in the lobby area, so please go visit her, uh, meet her, shake her hand, thank her for, for being faithful to the message that the Lord has given her today, and, um, and, and, and pick up something and be encouraged by uh, that ministry. And at Covenant Church, listen, there's a lot of things that you can get plugged into. Go to the Next Steps desk. We have we have small groups. We have freedom. We have renew. We have discipleship nights. We have uh, a marriage uh, events and, and men's and women's events. So make sure you get plugged in. Just go online and, and check out what's going on at Covenant Church or ask one of our team. Amen. So as you go on this beautiful day, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may he cover you with his precious holy name the name of Jesus. God bless you all. We'll see you soon.